Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in this video today, we're going to be reviewing day number 18 of training camp for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If you guys are new here, go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button if you do enjoy these training camp videos, and leave your thoughts down in the comments section down below. I do want to real quick talk about tomorrow's training camp before today's, however, because tomorrow will be the last day that I will be at training camp. August 18th is the last day, folks. I will be there uh, at the 50-yard line, hunched over with my phone, watching practice, taking notes. So if you guys are there, definitely come over to the 50-yard line. Come say hey to me. Let's talk about some Buccaneers football for a little bit. And let's all just enjoy the Buccaneers practice together. I think that is what it is all about personally. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into some of this information. Information that we are getting from pewterreport.com. By the way, their stuff will be down in the comments section down below as well. First thing to talk about is some roster moves that were made. The Buccaneers have placed guard Sidarius Hutcherson on the injured reserve. He had a partially torn ACL. I had talked about this in the community tab earlier today as well as a previous video and to take up his roster spot the Buccaneers have signed tackle Jake Benzinger who I believe most recently spent time with the Arizona Cardinals in 2020 so a very young developmental offensive lineman we will see what he can do trying to make the most of his opportunities but speaking on players who were out of practice today Justin Watson, John Franklin, they're both still on the pup list. You had Cam Gill, Raven Green, Danelle Stanley, Robert Hainsey, Jordan Whitehead, Troy Main Pope. They are all still out. Travis Johnson and OJ Howard were some new names added to this list. I'm sure it's nothing major, especially in the case of OJ Howard. It's probably a vet day more than anything. But the biggest name, in my opinion, on this list is actually Tanner Hudson. He has some sort of brace on one of his wrists, and he's uh, out for at least this day's worth of practice, which is terrible timing in my opinion, because Tanner Hudson definitely needs the reps. He needs to prove that he is improving, not just as a receiver, of course, we all know how good he can be at that, but as a blocker, he's got to prove himself. He needs those reps to improve, and if he is out for these uh, practices and whatnot, that's not good, so we'll see what happens in that kind of situation. Uh, we will talk about some of the tight ends a little bit later on today, so fingers crossed that Tanner Hudson can come back and uh, continue to compete for a fourth tight end spot. But let's go ahead and talk about some of the notes from practice here. Joe Tryon beat Brad Seaton on a pass rush during a play, which, you know, Joe Tryon, he's been phenomenal. He has been great, but one thing... One takeaway I think I had from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers' first preseason game is that the backup O-line might not be as strong as what I thought it was. I'm sure maybe there are some other people out there who, based on, you know, training camp notes and things along these lines, thought that, okay, yeah, the backup depth for this offensive line seems to be pretty strong. And it seems like right now, besides Aaron Stinney, there might be, and maybe Josh Wells if you want to include him, it seems like there's some question marks. I'm going to specifically name Brad Seaton because, you know, the guy didn't play for the entirety of the 2020 season because he opted out due to the illness. I totally respect that decision. I'm not knocking him for that at all. But there definitely might be some rust there. You know, I'm sure he stayed in shape and everything like that, but getting live action reps in the NFL, you can't really replicate that too, too much. So it might just be rust. It might actually be also a question mark as to, hey, you know, maybe we should consider some other options here at some of these backup O-line positions. I don't know. I'm just saying that first preseason game did worry me at least a little bit about the depth along this offensive line. I still love some of these guys, by the way, right? Aaron Stinney, John Mulshawn, friend of the channel, um, some of these other young guys as well. Robert Hainsey is great. Maybe it's also injuries are leading into this, uh, a factor into this, if you will. But I don't know, man. Just keep an eye on the backup O-line going forward here in the future. Carlton Davis and Khalil Davis both had good plays on screen passes. Something that we've been seeing a lot of for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense is their screen defense game has been very, very strong lately, and I'm happy to see more continuity with that. 
Tyler Johnson had a bad drop over the middle on a pass today. He did have another drop later on in uh, practice, but the pass was slightly behind him from Blaine Gabbert, and Gabbert was very frustrated after that throw. So, not going to knock Tyler Johnson too much on the second drop pass, but that first one, eh, you know, I'm not going to kill a guy over one dropped pass, but you do want to see more consistency with Tyler Johnson there. Still a lot to make the roster, in my opinion, just need more consistency. Robert Hainsey continued to get light work today during practice, which is good. I think that the Buccaneers could definitely use Robert Hainsey right now in this backup O-line. They're looking a little shaky in certain areas, so it's good to see him getting some light work in there. Javon Hagan had almost two interceptions today, but couldn't come down with them, which is unfortunate. I've talked about this before with some of these secondary guys. You really want to see them make the most of their opportunities. Part of that is getting interceptions. And Javon Hagan, he had such an up-and-down first preseason game. I know I had him listed as the player of the game, um, and I still think he probably was, but there were also a lot of missed opportunities. Bruce Arians said he missed a lot of tackles in his post-game pr uh, press conference. He said that about a handful of defensive players. And you just really wish a guy like Javon Hagan would really just get his hands on those interceptions because it would mean... A lot in terms of him really getting a full crack. I mean, he's already got a crack at the 53-man roster, but it would help his chances even more so to speak. So, Javon Hagan, I'm sure he's uh, definitely learning, you know, to come down with those interceptions, and I think that we will still continue to see good play out of him. Tom Brady connected well with guys like Cody McElroy, uh, Ronald Jones, Chris Godwin, and Rob Gronkowski today. Now, three out of those four makes sense. Ronald Jones, he's, you know, definitely been working with Tom Brady for a while now. Same thing with Chris Godwin and Rob Gronkowski. Cody McElroy, you know, there's an injury right now to Tanner Hudson. McElroy is making the most of it. And again, it's going to be a very interesting situation that's going to happen here with Tanner Hudson and Cody McElroy battling for that fourth tight end spot. You imagine whichever guy doesn't make it, they'll probably put on the practice squad, but I highly doubt that they would stay on the practice squad for long because both these guys are really putting in that work. And uh, honestly, I'd, I'd still probably give the edge to Cody McElroy right now. I, I know it used to be Tanner Hudson. I definitely think that that has switched in my opinion. I'm probably leaning more towards Cody McElroy now being the guy for that fourth tight end job. And Tanner Hudson missing time with injuries, that is, uh, you know, worse whenever you compo compound it with the fact that Cody McElroy is getting some good reps in practice as well while Hudson is sitting out. Leonard Fournette had a rough drop on the day. Again, I don't expect much from Leonard Fournette in the passing game at this point. I know that sounds blunt and maybe mean, but that's what Giovanni Bernard is there for. So overall, I'm not going to, you know, just shrivel up and, and explode over the fact that Leonard Fournette had a drop in practice today. Uh, it is what it is at the end of the day. That's not going to be his primary job. Antoine Winfield Jr. almost had another interception on Tom Brady today, but could not come down with it, much like in the case of Javon Hagan. And a lot of these secondary guys just come down with the interceptions. Guys, it's really, really good things when you do. So they are all definitely learning here. They are all growing as players, and they will definitely work on that, I imagine. Jadon Mickens had a good sideline catch with Grant Stewart in coverage. It was gr very good coverage uh, on the part of Grant Stewart. It was just a great catch from Mickens. Uh, kind of a mismatch, too, if you think about it. Jadon Mickens on Grant Stewart, a wide receiver going up against a linebacker. So I would give even more credit to Grant Stewart, but Mickens continues to have a very solid camp. Who knows what's going to happen with that wide receiver room? Honestly, I would give Mickens a decent chance to make this 53-man roster at the end of the day. I think that he really has impressed some of those coaches, and I think he just continues to put in great work. And speaking of continuity and great work, Jose Borregales continues to look good in practice, making his kicks. Uh, again, he he just won't be able to be on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers practice squad, I think. I don't think they'll be able to get away with stashing him. I highly expect him to be on another team's roster. He has been killing it this training camp. If the Buccaneers had a kicking controversy, honestly, I'd probably give him the edge over whoever he'd be going up against. It just so happens Ryan Suckup, it's pretty much set in stone that he's going to be the Buccaneers kicker. Um, so, unless there's some big surprise, which, I mean, who knows, man? Who knows? I mean, Jose Borregales has really been killing it. That would certainly be a surprise, though, uh, if Ryan Suckup was not the kicker and Jose Borregales beat him out for the job. I give it, like, a 0.00001% chance of happening, but, 
I'm not going to say it's impossible. So, anyway, yeah, I still think Ryan Suckup's a lock for the job. But anyway, guys, that's it for these training camp notes. What do you think about everything that I talked about? What do you think about Tanner Hudson being out for this practice and Cody McElroy taking advantage of those opportunities? What do you think about the backup offensive line and what's going on with there? That's a little... A uh, little nugget of worry and fear, although you do, you do definitely have a lot of guys who are out. You have Danelle Stanley, who's looked good. He's out. Robert Hainsey, that's a big one. He's out. But I kind of am more locked in on the backup tackles, per se. What are your guys' thoughts on them? What are your guys' thoughts on maybe a backup guard or two? I think that Aaron Stinney's been doing good. But after that, not including guys like Robert Hainsey and Danelle Stanley and, you know, John Mulshawn, some of these guys who have been hurt or have had to play other positions... It's a little iffy right now for me. So give me your thoughts on that. Give me your thoughts about everything that I talked about down in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now. And go Bucks.